Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Isis, Imitation of Life. The Goddess Next Door helps a young black girl overcome racism during the era of Jim Crow in this golden age Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Imitation of Life in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. Here we go. Testing one, two, three. Microphone check one, two, three. Is this mic on? Hello. Testing one, two, three. Can everybody hear me in the chat room? Testing one, two, three. Follow yours truly on Twitter. You can follow yours truly on Twitter at Obsidian Files, all one word, F-I-L-E-S, at Obsidian Files, people. Do it now. <sighs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we got a heck of a show. It's been a heck of a day. It's going to look like it's going to be one heck of a night. And... Uh, <laughs> You know what? I'm, I'm not even going to get into all of that. Listen, we're going to have a heck of a show tonight. And uh, special guest is the one and only Sean James. The one and only Sean James will be joining us tonight, ladies and gentlemen, here on Obsidian Radio, the live stream show. So with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get it. Just need a little time. 
past the hour ladies and gentlemen you're listening to obsidian radio the live stream show and i am the voice of the everyday brother i'm your host Mumbi obsidian ali it is tgif show number two of the big double header welcome to the program glad you could make it and thank you for listening i really appreciate it my friends friday january the 11th 2019 and a very chilly 27 degrees here in the city of brotherly love, the ill of the 215, home of yours truly and birthplace of American democracy, the city of brotherly love. Let's get it. All right, y'all. Now, uh, man. <clears throat> coming off of this, uh, this really bad cold, this flu and all the rest of it really had me jacked up for pretty much the entire week through my whole schedule off and uh, looking to get back and, you know, on the good foot next week, but uh, I did want to put a little something on the books, and uh, we were on the air a little bit earlier, and uh, I said then that my special guest tonight needs no introduction, the one and only Sean James. He is back tonight for our discussion of what he refers to as, where's my echo box here? Beware! <laughs> Of the washed up black woman. That is tonight's discussion topic, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to get right to it right now. Before we do, just want to let everybody know that tonight's exciting episode of Obsidian Radio comes courtesy of the generous support of listeners just like you. And uh, if you like what it is that we're doing here on Obsidian Radio, you like the concept of the show, you like uh, yours truly's voice with the echo box effect, if you like uh, what it is that we stand for, you like the concept, then what the heck are you waiting for? Put five on it. Become one of the 900 Patreons that we need to stay on the air, getting bigger and better. All the details going to be over on my Patreon page, www 
dot patreon dot com slash Mumia Obsidian Ali. Do it now. You'll be glad that you did. And for those who wish to become soldiers in the invisible army here at Obsidian Radio by becoming private premium PayPal members, two ways you can do that. One is via Streamlabs, www.streamlabs.com slash Obsidian Talk Radio. The other is PayPal Direct, www.paypal.me slash Obsidian Talk Radio. The mods will be posting up the links all night in the chat room. <clears throat> and uh, I really appreciate that. And um, and uh, let me see what else we got here. Uh, oh, also, because tonight's topic is most timely in light of recent events, I have to warn those in attendance that the old radio core in the chat room have been given the admonition of weapons free because uh, some things that will be talked about tonight may upset some to such an extent that they may have to be escorted out of the chat room. So I have to warn you that uh, if you're not prepared for what we're going to be talking about tonight, which is beware of the watched mm -hmm. black, black woman. I have to warn you right now, you may have to be escorted out. The mods have been instructed for weapons free. All right, so with that all being said, we now go to our special guest, Mr. Sean James. What's going on, Brother James? I'm I'm good. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for being here. Hey, uh, I understand that you got uh, some new digs, man. Yeah, I moved from my old apartment in Morrisania to a new one in Parkchester. So right now I'm in this new place, and I also have home internet. So I finally met the final goal of Sean James Initiative last year around December. Booyah! There it is, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. I've been saying this for the longest time, that black male media can work if brothers get behind it. If brothers get behind it, it can work. And thanks to I'm your support. Proof. Sean James is living proof. Go ahead, brother Sean James. And thanks to your support and thanks to you helping me with the Sean James Initiative, I was able to build the platform and I had my first live stream last week and I'm going to be having a new one um, this Tuesday at 11 a.m. Very good. Very good. I'm very happy to hear that and uh, looking uh, to doing even more great things with the Sean James Initiative because it ain't over yet. We're just getting started. Black male media is getting started. Support black male media. Support Sean James. Maybe matter of fact, let me put some links up in the uh, chat room myself because I still got some links. By the way, you definitely want to get his latest book. The you got to do that for me, man. The new book is called The Man Crisis. No, I mean the way that you do it. The way that you do it on the ad, man. You mean the Man Crisis? <laughs> <laughs> you got a voice for radio, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, you that's what people have been up. telling me. Yeah, and, and I'm also getting ready to launch in March the ISIS graphic novel Indiegogo, and oh, okay. that one is when I'm going to be trying to raise a lot of money so I can publish the first ISIS series graphic novel. Um, it's going to be an adaptation of the upcoming ISIS series book, ISIS All the Glitters, which is going to be coming out later this March. You can pre-order that on Kindle, or you can pick up the paperback right now. And that is the first book of the SJS Direct 2019 catalog. But I'm going to be doing, trying to get a comic book adaptation made with myself and Bill Walko and a color artist and a letterer. And it's going to be the first comic book of the SJS Direct imprint wow. if I can get the funding for it on the Indiegogo. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, you all heard it, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, definitely pick up his latest book right now. I'm going to throw up the other links for Sean James all night here on the show here at Obsidian Radio. I'm telling you, you got to have vision, you got to have faith, and you got to put the works behind it. You can do it. Black male media is a real thing. And, you know, it's interesting, Sean. You got new digs in December. I got new digs in December because I just moved myself to my all-new digs. And uh, so, yeah. so, yeah, I mean, uh, it just goes to show that uh, it can work if you get behind it and you stay and you work your plan. Support black male media, ladies and gentlemen. Support Black Male Media, support Obsidian Radio, support the Sean James Initiative. All right, now, 
let's get right. to today's topic. You did a really interesting video the other day, commentary, which was based on something that you wrote. Actually, this is about six, seven years ago called Beware the Washed Up Black Woman. I wanted to uh, ask you if you wouldn't mind reading that essay that you wrote on your website. And I'm going to post a link in the chat room. Please, let me pull it up. Yeah, okay. if you wouldn't mind reading it, and then we'll go ahead and discuss it from there. While you do that, I'll post up the link so everybody else can check it out. Uh, it, it, I read it, and I said, man, he's, he's got to read this because this, uh, this is some deep shit. And it's very timely given what's going on right now. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Well, but, I brought, uh, I, made right. the, I made the most recent video about that after watching David Carroll's classic video where he was talking about these black women making these videos on YouTube about black men. And then yeah. I remembered the classic blog I wrote called Beware the Washed Up Black Woman. So after I saw David Carroll's video, I, I made me really think about that old classic blog I made in 2012. And I decided to do a follow up to it this week. And the, the blog goes like this. Washed up single black women over 30 often reinvent themselves with new personas. Many often parade around with over the top personalities like the artsy boho chick, the Afrocentric mother of earth, the dedicated single mother, and the born again Christian. But these new identities are just a deflection to keep people from seeing the truth about how ugly these women are, or really were in their late teens and 20s. The washed up single black woman it's oftentimes an over 30 black woman who has been run through by all the successful men in her neighborhood. She's often the former hottie from high school or college, the stuck up chick with the great body who thought she was too good for anyone but a man with money, a high profile career or a high status job. At this stage in her life, she's gained some weight, had some kids, went or went through a nasty divorce. Sometimes she's recovering from alcoholism or a substance abuse problem. Quite a few are bogged down in debt. Washed up black single women are often a supplicator to good black men. They look beautiful on the outside, but they're often filled with dead men's bones on the inside. Many are carrying emotional baggage from previous failed relationships. Some are dealing with mental health issues. A few have kids from multiple fathers. And in a few rare cases, she's got incurable venereal diseases like herpes or HIV. A washed up single over the top behavior. She's often the one to be a bit too passionate about things, even overzealous. For example, a born again Christian is the type to profess her love for Jesus loudly. She's the type of woman to attend the church every Sunday and is the one to be on all the committees. She's never seen without her Bible. She ministers and witnesses to just about everyone she runs into telling them about Jesus. However, when someone pushes her buttons or just has enough money, she'll quickly revert to her old behavior, showing all how sinful she really is. Now, the Afrocentric mother of Earth is usually one to talk passionately about how Africa is the motherland and how black women are the mother of all the world. She's the type to be a vegetarian and talk about health and spiritualism. She's the one running around wearing dreads, a dashiki or other Afrocentric wear. She's all the one talking about going back to the motherland. And she's often carrying all of her wonderful American creature pamphlets like iPods, cell phones, and talks about cable TV shows like Sex in the City. Offer her a ticket to the Sudan, on the other hand, and one of those starving African homelands, and she'll protest that she's needed here in America to make people aware of the plight of her people. Now, the boho chick is the type to talk about arts with all her soul. She's the type to be into acting, singing, dance, sometimes with all of them at once. Someone will even paint too. She's the kind of chick to wear vintage clothes from different eras that don't go with each other. Or she wears all black. It's a form of expression. Boho chicks are known for being pretentious and arty, artsy. They love to use big words and they're well cultured in literature and art. Some are so intelligent they can tell you all about the nuances in a story or be so deep that they need a translator to figure out what they're saying. They usually have side hustles like art shows, one women shows or poetry jams, or they're working on financing an independent film or a stage play that never gets finished. The use of all these unique looks are cues to get a man's attention. Since men are visual, many often get caught up in the distinct appearance of these women that they don't listen to what they say or pay attention to the small details they get wrong. When a man pays attention to those minute details, 
he soon finds out while the outside has changed, the inside is still the same. Watch their actions because it defines how little has changed about their character. A washed up black woman can also be identified by her use of shaming tactics. She's the one to vehemently point out the wrongs of others while placing herself on a pedestal as a paragon of virtue or a guru of great knowledge. She hopes that by projecting this guilt onto other people, they won't see her flaws. Most children can see through these washed up chicks and most savvy adults if they pay attention to them. Once one breaks past through the falsest facade, they soon find that these washed up black women are the same old gold diggers looking for a new meal ticket. And with their prospects of snagging a high profile man exhausted, they're settling for the new guy at the bottom. Preferably a thirsty simp with a fat wallet and a pension that will take care of them in their old age. Which is why good hardworking black men, you have to watch out. Good black men have worked too hard to build themselves up to have all they've established torn down by these female scavengers. All these parasites are going to do is leech onto a man and suck the life out of him until he dies or run, runs out of money, whichever comes first. Brothers, remember that these were the same women who told you that you weren't good enough that, to deal with back in the day. They aren't worth your time right now. Don't settle for some, some washed up old black woman's second choice. You deserve better than being second best. Keep walking and don't look back. Brother, remember that she made the mess of her life. So let her put on some coveralls with her run over Jimmy Choo's and clean it up. You work too hard to achieve success in your career to be some woman's Pullman Porter. Life is too short to deal with someone else's garbage. All right. Ah, uh, turn me loose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh uh, Sean, I don't think you really let us know what you really think about that. Uh, but <laughs> I'm just joking. All right. So, uh, wow, those are pretty, pretty strong words. I, I got to ask you because it is kind of prescient going back some seven years back to the year 2017 and looking at it now, what, what, what prompted you to write that piece back then? Number one and number two, I have to ask, it sounds pretty, uh, is there any uh, personal touchstones there with this, or, or this is just purely observational in your part? Well, the entire blog when I wrote it was purely observational because when I when I go out and I look at the black community and I saw many of these women out here, I saw a lot of them talking about reinventing themselves, and I can see right through a lot of the gimmicks. So when I looked at these women, I started to see what they were up to, and I wanted guys to understand what they were going to have to deal with, because that's why I wanted them to beware these washed up black women, because these were the same women, again, when their teens and early 20s wouldn't give many brothers the time of day, and now they want to come back with this brand new persona, which they won't hope to use to get the attention of those brothers in the hopes of trying to get them to have a relationship with them. So I saw all these women out here pulling this game, and that's why I came up with the concept of beware the washed up black woman. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, there's, there's this, the, we've been dealing with this here on Obsidian Radio, this, uh, what Uncle Dave, David Carr, I'll call him Uncle Dave, what he refers to as the YouTube bimbo brigade, the idea that you have this glut of black women now, now that the black manosphere is ascendant, now that black male media is really coming along, you're living proof of that, so am I and others, that uh, it has attracted this glut of black women <clears throat> who uh, come bearing wampum beads, I guess you could say, and uh, it's created something of a stir among the denizens of black the black manosphere. Quite a few seem to feel, as you and Uncle Dave, that these ladies are something like uh, Trojan horses, if you will. And uh, I got to say, there's a there there. So, uh, <laughs> wow. Um, you know, the, the, the one thing I, I noticed it, with your piece and, and looking at my own life, you know, I'm 50 now. So, turned 50 last month. Oh, and okay. so... I'm thinking about your piece in relation to my age, and I'm, I'm looking at a number of ladies in my age cohort. That is to say, 
you know, in the, within a decade of me, either side. Uh, obviously, not looking at it too much older, but m m mainly in the younger in the younger direction. So forty and above. And I'm and I'm thinking to myself. <laughs> I have seen quite a few of the ladies that you describe in that cohort that I've known over the years, you know, that I've observed or or known in some kind of social capacity or whatnot. And I have to say that, uh, yeah, there, there, there's a there there. Um, <laughs> what do you say about the guys like us? We're both Gen Xers. You're a little bit younger than me. But um, what what do you say about us Gen Xer guys having to deal with the, the the situation at this point in our lives? What's what's your views on that? Well, we just have to be very careful with who we associate with and who we deal with. And one of the reasons why we have to be careful is because these washed up black women, oftentimes they want to use these gimmicks because they know that they have very few dating options anymore. They have already been run through by the white guys, the Hispanic guys, the Asian guys, and the thugs. So now they're at their last ditch effort. And this is why they want to reinvent themselves with this brand new persona and then put on this costume in hopes to get the attention of a decent brother. Because a lot of them, they have drug problems. Some of them have mental health issues. Others have um, a lot of financial debt. And they want to try to play the female chameleon by adopting a look that allows them to blend in with another group of men in the hopes of trying to find that man who will secure them in their older age. So that's why guys have to be careful because these washed up black women, again, they're like female chameleons. And unless you know what the tells are for them, you can easily be taken advantage of by these women. Wow. <laughs> I'm just sitting here like, God damn, I'm sick of my head because I, I have seen this. I have seen sisters try to, you know, <laughs> you know, the whole poetry slam deal. And it is, you know, you, you could kind of go along with it when the woman is young. You know, she's in her 20s. You know, it's OK. But you see a broad in her 40s doing this stuff sort of thing. I'm just like, you know, come on. Really? It just shows how desperate they are. They're really <laughs> desperate. So. They need this. They need this gimmick because they know that after this, the prospects are they get they get next to be none because the pool of simps, as I talked about in my book, why seventy percent of black women are single. As a woman gets older, the pool of simps starts to shrink, and their <laughs> prospects. The go, pool of simps, damn. Yeah. yeah, because when a woman is in her teens and early twenties, the pool of simps is large, but as she gets older, the pool of simps gets smaller and smaller. And when she gets into her 40s and 50s, that's when you only have like maybe two or three of these guys around because most of them are either married already, a lot of them have taken the red pill and woken up, or a lot of them already have their own family. So her prospects of finding a man to have a relationship with, again, start to dwindle. And this is where she starts putting on the costumes and characters in the hopes of getting attention from guys. I love it. All right, so... <laughs> The pool of sips. <laughs> the pool of sips. I love that shit. Um, but no, I mean, but but uh, but uh, but there's a lot of truth in that because you know, okay, look, most guys, not all, but most guys have been a simp in their life. Okay, again, when you're young, you do dumb shit. I, I okay, fair enough. But it's something else. See, see, it's one thing to be a simp, right? And you're a young guy, you, you know, 18, 20, 25, whatever. You 45, 50 years old and you're still a simp. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah, that, by that, that age, you should have woke up by then. Yeah, I mean, you know, being a simp is a young man's thing. That's a young man's game, being a simp. It's like I said, stop simping. By the time you turn 21, you should have at least woke up by then. <laughs> minimum 20 maximum 21 22 if you do well, I, I tell you I, you know i tell you something interesting you say that because that's what happened to me i mean you know not that i was ever like a simp but you know by the time i got into my early 20s i was like you know eyes wide open in the whole bit like i see exactly what's going on by that point so you know i was kind of like on the 
fuzzy about it in my teenage years. But by the time, like you said, by the time I hit 21, I knew exactly what was going on. Although I, I know I was never like a simp, but I was kind of like in the in the haze, so to speak. Yeah. By the time I reached 20, 21, I was like, oh, yeah, I see what's going on. Because with teenage guys, you, you really, you're just starting out. You don't really know that much about girls. You don't know that much about women. So you can understand, a, I can understand a 13, 14, 15-year-old kid making those mistakes because I made those mistakes when I was a teenager. But eventually you reach a point where you start to wake up and then you start saying, I got to stop doing this stuff and move to a do to do things differently. And like, yeah, I, want- I mean... Yeah, I, I, yeah, and 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 I agree with you. Perhaps the only thing that's worse than a what, as you like to put it, and I, and I like that term too. I gotta, we gotta use that, fellas. We gotta introduce that into the lexicon. A washed up black woman. The only thing that's worse than that, I would say, is an old simp. Yep. I mean that you know, and I, 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 I I'm not a woman, obviously, but I have to believe. That a woman is kind of like holding a nose, getting with an old simp, because it's like what the 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 stench of desperation and all the rest of it. I mean, I just I, you know it's it's really sad. But in any event, I agree with you that for a lot of these washed up broads, the, the 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 pickings are slim, because any any man of any consequence is going to be taken off the market. Uh, he's he's going to if he's not married. He's going to have a significant other. He's going to have something. He's not just going to be just single out there. So, uh, and in this day and age, with the internet, with the with the rise of the MGTOW movement, with the rise of the men's movement, with the rise of the manosphere, white and black now, I, I have a hard time believing that there are many old simps left. And nope. You might be able to count them on like one hand. Like three or four left my out there on a Serengeti or something. But I mean, but for the most part, the simps are gone. So like you said, the pool is pretty much done. You pretty much drain the swamp of all the simps there. You know, just like I said in, in the book, why 70% of black women are single, pool of shrimp simps. Once these women get into their 30s and their 40s, they find that the prospects get to be slim to none because the old simps are pretty much gone. Again, due to guys, some of them get killed and over fighting in their teens and 20s. Others get married um, early on in their 20s or their 30s. And other ones, they just take the red pill and they've woken up. So her prospects shrink as she gets older. She's still thinking she's like the young hottie she was in her teens and her 20s. And this is a lot of thing that a lot of these women have a problem with. They're still thinking that they could, the world is still going to be the same. And they still think they can pull those same things that they used to. But they don't understand that the market is changing and the world is changing. This is what's really messing up a lot of women is that they still think it's that way, but it's not. You're not the hottie you used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 really uh, cracks me up. So so there's several types of washed up black women that you mentioned in your piece. So I wanted to, uh, to, to go into a little bit more detail with each. Let's start with the probably the most popular form of them, and that's the church, the, the, the church washed up black woman. The, the born again Christian and all that sort of thing. You know, the holy roller. So my understanding of these type of women is they used to be out in them streets real hard and, and they was getting it, you know, socked it to them hard. Matter of fact, the only time they was calling out for Jesus when they was bent over somebody's couch. And then, you know, at some point they, they went and got the Holy Ghost, you know, by means other than the good wood. And then they became, you know, sanctified and all the rest of it. And, 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 and some of them even try to say that they're born again virgins and all the rest of it. They want to roll the miles back on the odometer and all this sort of thing. And then they want to make the simp, you know, wine them and dine them and all the rest of it. Of course, Pookie, Ray, Ray, man, man, muck, muck, yap, yap, and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> young Dante and Jamarcus and all the rest of it. They just ran up in there, you know what I mean? Without having to do all of that stuff. What, what's your uh, take on all of that? Well, usually the, Born again Christian, again, is the chick who has been run through by all the guys in the neighborhood and even some of the white guys on the job. And what and what happens is she has this bitter breakup and she's so emotionally hurt that now she wants to call herself finding Jesus as a way to heal herself. But usually she's only finding God because she has been um, rejected by these men. She still wants to be with the men, but she wants to make God a substitute man. And then she wants to use God as an enforcer to shame people into 
agreeing with her and submitting to her. And what she does is she uses her so-called born again Christian position to make everybody miserable around her. So that's why this washed up black woman, you know, she gets religion, but she gets religion at him so that she can deal with her emotional hurts, but then she then uses God as a weapon to abuse others. And that's why she's a washed up woman. She wants to go out here and get a man, but the whole thing is she wants a man to be under her and sub completely submissive to her. And she wants that because she wasn't able to have power in the relationship with the man she had before. And now she's looking for some beta male to be under her. And, and that's why she's out here looking for this so-called good Christian man, but what she's looking for is a completely submissive simp. <laughs> oh, <laughs> here's the thing about Sean James. <laughs> he he says this stuff with a straight face, man. <laughs> He says it with a straight face. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it, I just, you know, all right, so let's move on to the next one. And uh, that that's the, uh, we already talked about the artsy chick. But I, I tell you the truth, those are the ones I had the most fun with. I, I, I love just like fucking with them, you know, because they, they, they're so pretentious with this artsy bullshit. And it's like, you know, you're not fooling. You know, they, they try to come across like they're so serious about their craft and all this sort of thing. And it's like, uh, no, you. everybody knows you just got into this poetry thing like a year ago or whatever. I mean, come on, stop. You know, there's nothing wrong for liking art or liking music or whatever. Okay, all well and good. But to try to pretend like you're some kind of art tour. Hell out of here with that. <laughs> you ain't no art tour. <laughs> You're just some washed up broad trying to trying to get a new angle. That's 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 what that's all about. And I, I remember I used to um years ago, right? So I used to hang out at these poetry spots, and it wasn't because I was a big poet. I was just trolling for some ass. That's what that was all about. So me and my buddies, we used to go hit up the, the poetry spots because we knew that's where a lot of the chicks would be at. And I mean, we 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 were we didn't give a shit about the poetry. We we were trying to you know hit them up. That was what that was all about. And, um, and you know, so a lot of times I would just make up silly rhymes right on the spot, you know what I mean? Just to, you know, rip them. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I would do. But, uh, yeah, the, 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 the RT piece is funny as hell. And then the other piece you talked about, the African Earth Mother, whatever. Oh, man, here in Philly and New York City is similar. You get a lot of that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've okay. seen a lot of these natural hair women talking about back to Africa. And usually they're on the arm of some white dude. And that's what really makes it hilarious. It's just quite comical. <laughs> they pro black, but they got a white man. Well, I mean, see, see, here's I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, Sean. The rule is you can be pro black and sleep white if you're a black woman. See, if you're a black man, you have to be pro black means that you're with a Jill Scott with a big chop and a Grace Jones paint job by Earl Shaw. That's what it means. Right? But if you're a black woman, you can be pro-black and sleep white all day, every day. The rule only applies to black men. That's, That's a double standard. Say what? I said it's a double standard. Oh, of course it is. Of course it's a double standard, but see, it only, it's it, it's still cool because it's black women. If it's black men, then you, you know, you, you, you're, you're faking the funk, you hate yourself, your mama black, uh, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The pro-black piece only works if you're a black man. But if you're a black woman, you can be pro, matter of fact, not only can you be pro-black and sleep white, you can be pro-black sleep white, procreate white, and still tell black men about themselves. You got full moral authority to do that. That is the power uh, of the black vagina. You see? That, that, that's what it means to be the earth, Africa, Africa earth mother, and, and the, the mothership and all that sort of thing. 
I just found that to be hilarious. I admit, I've made jokes about it in books I've written. In a book I wrote called Isis, House of Isis, I made fun of it. And in some in an episode for some screenplays I did for called All About Nikki Season 2, I made fun of it as well. This whole black pro-black female who goes out here and goes out here with white men. And then what she tries to do is she tries to shame other black people by trying to make them feel like they're not black enough. And that's part of her gimmick is she wants to make you feel inferior about your blackness so you can buy into her and then buy into her hustles for whatever back to Africa scheme she's got or whatever books she's trying to sell. Usually she uses her, her shaming language to fall into a push into a sales pitch. So that's another trick of these washed up females because it's also a part of their business to make money off you. And that's what the boho and that's what that pro black back to Africa chick do is they want to push you into either supporting their documentaries, their poetry slams, or the books that they're trying to sell. And I talked about that in detail in my ISIS series book, ISIS House of ISIS. And in an episode of All About Nikki season two, I show you all the tactics and tricks that they use to con people. And, I, and no disrespect to your hometown, but there is a lot of that in New York. And to be fair, there's a lot, they, they call Philly the land of the flim flam. And so you got a lot of that down here in Philly too. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to I'm sitting here radio, the live stream show. This is a double header. This is the second show of the double header here on uh, TGIF Friday edition. And my special guest is Sean James and uh, the uh, author and uh, artist extraordinaire. And uh, he is back to talk about Beware, the washed up black woman, a much uh, most timely uh, topic, given all that's been going on of late with the so-called YouTube Bimbo Brigade that has been dubbed by Uncle Dave, David Carroll. And uh, we, we, we're here to chop it up this evening. We're going to take some questions from the audience. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, the uh, uh, link in the chat room. We're going to take a break. And uh, I'm going to put the link in the chat room. And if anybody's got any questions for Sean James, you can go ahead and pose your questions. You want to say something before we go to the break? Um, no, we can go to the break. Okay, great. We're going to go and take a break, and then we're going to come right back. Uh, stay tuned. You're listening to Obsidian Radio, the live stream show. I'm not weird, I'm honest. 
You ain't artsier than me, cause you only read books, don't watch TV. You ain't artsier than me, cause you shop at Whole Foods and open toe shoes. You ain't artsier than me, cause you speak real soft. You ain't artsier than me. I recycle too. I'm kind of like you. I just look clean. Home to me. Wear deodorant. Register folks with a 302. Not an ego. Love you, but it's gotta be both ways. Both days, I'm early stay grounded. I'm a little paper chase. I'm not rounded. Straight to face town. It's all balanced. I'll make a sound universally called over. Coming from TV. They shake the first one. He's doing for the other. And he's singing. Like a rock. Starting on Sunday. You drive a hybrid three. You ain't on tier to me. Cause you're sixteenth Mexican. You ain't that big. You ain't on tier to me. We just a broke ass fool with the same old cadence. You ain't artsier than me. We was conscious first. Welcome to Earth. Forty nine minutes past the hour, ladies and gentlemen. You listen to Obsidian Radio, the live stream show. I am your host, me Obsidian Ali. And uh we're joined here by my very special guest, uh Sean James, author and illustrator extraordinaire. He's back for his first interview here on Obsidian Radio for 2019. And we're talking about washed up black women. He wrote a really interesting and as it turns out, prescient piece seven years ago on his uh website on his blog and uh as it turns out these days that topic is very hot and uh, we're taking questions from the audience if you have any questions with sean james questions on the topic tonight of washed up black women all you have to do is just hit up the link the hangout link in the chat room that i'm posting up now and you can come on and pose your questions and chop it up with yours truly and my special guest for this evening sean james I see my man DDS is in the uh, hangout. What's going on, DDS? What's your question or comment? Is he there? Uh, DDS, man, you got to uh, unmute yourself. You got to unmute your mic. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Go ahead. Okay. Hey, brother of City, and how you doing? I'm doing great, man. How you feeling? You gotta, uh, unmute yourself. You gotta unmute your mic. You have to, you have to mute your, your YouTube channel, bro. You to, yeah, you have okay. to mute your YouTube channel. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. You have to mute your YouTube channel. You have to mute your, your YouTube channel, bro. Okay, I think I, I think I did it. No, you haven't done it because I can still hear feedback. Okay, he's muted himself again. You have to mute your YouTube channel where you see yourself playing on YouTube. You have to mute that. I, I, I'm not sure he. Uh, Understands what's going on here, Sean. Um, all right, let's 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 continue. Let me put the link in the uh, chat room again. Uh, let me let me read to you some uh, comments from the people in the chat room, Sean. You can respond to them that way. Okay. Supreme King Coon says, "I find it interesting that all of these washed-up broads always have an array of black male shaming language in their repertoire." Your response? Well, that's just what washed-up black women do because they want. The black men to agree feel bad about 
coming to challenge them because that's how they get the attention from men. Usually when a man challenges them, they want to shame them and silence them. And they want to do that because they know if the guy reveals the truth about them, they won't have any prospects with other men. So they want to try to shut guys down as fast as they can. <laughs> All right. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Still on the men from this really bad cold. Universal Black 72 says, good evening, everyone. I started to notice with these women that they push the narrative as in terms of dick patrolling, especially toward black men. Well, that's what washed up black women do. They want to try to patrol those men and try to police those men because they know every man that winds up going outside to date Latino women, Asian women, or even white women or um other types of women, that's a woman that they're not going to have a chance at getting. So they know that the pool of simps is shrinking. And what they want to do is try to try to shame these men and if, to make them believe that they have to go after them first. But these women never made black men a first priority. They were never the first choice for black men. Usually, again, these women had already chosen these white men, these Hispanic men, these Asian men, these Arab men, and the thug Negroes first. And she's made the black man her last choice. And that's an insult to black men. That's really a slap in our faces when she tries to shame us when she never made us the first choice or the first priority. Uh, Rowdy asks, Obsidian asks Sean, what he thinks of the ex-swirler black female YouTuber claiming they love black men versus MGTOW groupie, an ex-feminist, AKA traditionalist, and why they infiltrate men's YouTube channels. Well, they both came from, come from the same pool. They're both the same type of washed up black female. I mean, the washed up black female and, the, and these females who are trying to infiltrate MGTOW, these are all female chameleons. And what these female chameleons want to do now is They've made all, like the swirlers, they know that they have already blown it with the white men, and now they want to try to monkey branch back to the black men. And with these women who are trying to infiltrate MGTOW, they know that their prospects with regular, with, with guys out here, has they've blown those chances, and now they want to monkey branch back over to MGTOW, and they are hoping that there are enough simps in MGTOW that they will be able to try to get some type of relationship with them. Both of them are using the same tactics and they're both looking to monkey branch over to these groups by trying to play sympathetic, but a critical thinking man who has taken the red pill can easily see through this. And then again, that's why I tell guys to beware of these washed up females. Uh, Terrain 1017 says, do you think now that white daddy is drying up the welfare state resources and corporate jobs that there will be a change in behavior. It'll be a change in behavior on the surface. Again, what these women are doing as female chameleons is they are changing their appearance and changing their persona in the hopes of getting the attention and approval of what they're gonna do is make themselves appear to be sympathetic to men on the surface because they're not be able to get the resources from the welfare state. And what they want to do is try to make themselves appear to be sympathetic to those men so that they will give them some resources. So that's what they're trying to do with this whole thing. So whenever you see a female out here and she's all of a sudden, now she's a MGTOW, now she's a supporter of black men. Again, that comes because those resources from the welfare state are drying up and those resources from white men are drying up. And now they want to monkey branch over to these men in the hopes of getting a place to be taken care of. All right. Uh, I'll sit, go ahead. Uh, I'm sitting. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, um, um, this is DDS08D. I just, you know, reporting. I just wanted to um, bring to your attention, a, you know, saying a subject about Nicole Michelle and a lot of these, uh, you know, black women that are, pretenders right now you know um you know i i think that you know black women don't need to be in male spaces because you know they're trying to infiltrate and trying to um you know get on our good side you know a lot of times they say a lot of good comments to us to try to get us to have a personal relationship with them 
And then once they get that personal relationship, you know, it's hard for us to come back at them, you know, and um, attack them when their fuckery comes out. You know what I'm saying? Because that black female fuckery is going to come out. You know what I'm saying? But if they have a personal relationship with you, you know, it's going to make it difficult for you to come back at them because you feel like, oh, I'm attacking my friend. So, so, you have, so you have to be careful about, you know, these women that come at you on social media with these, you know, compliments, you know, and that's the, you know, one thing that I wanted to bring out. And then the other thing that I wanted to bring out too is about, you know, I know that you have been saying a lot about, you know, cuts, you know, that your black, you know. Cuts! <laughs> right you know cuts you know but you know the one thing about the cuts is that you have to be careful about you know about that because you know if you become disabled disabled or if you know your old lady become disabled or your lady friend become disabled you know then you're going to be saying you know saying a different tune because she's going to need those things you, know, you see what i'm saying so i'm thinking that the best avenue to go about is that maybe that what we you know you know maybe you know we need to just you know uh um check you know try to check the system for abuses you know that way people don't abuse the system because there are a lot of people out there that need it, you know what I'm saying? That need that assistance. All right, what's your take, Obsidian? Uh, as a matter of fact, I want to go and hand it off to our special guest, Sean James, the expert on the washed up black woman. And uh, before you go into it, Sean, let me just read this comment to add to what DDS just said. And that is, uh, and this is public enemy MGTOW. He says, uh, uh, Obsidian, why the majority of black men simp to these hair-hatted black women knowing she don't care about them. Sean, your response? Well, a lot of these men simp because they just aren't, they just haven't gotten the red pill knowledge. A lot of these guys, again, they come from single mother households and because they come from single mother households, they don't have a man there to teach them the basic social skills as related to dating and relationships and they don't have the guidance from men. So that's why they go out here and get involved with these women and usually when it comes down to the other brother who was talking, um, what these women want to do is they want to hook you in and get you involved emotionally. And that's part of the washed up black woman's trick. What she wants to do is get you involved emotionally into her so that when you're involved with her emotionally, you're not thinking critically and you're not thinking straight. And that's one of the things that they want to do is pull you in very quickly so they can get you thinking not critically, but emotionally when you're reacting to her instead of responding to whatever she's saying or doing. Uh, Carl H. White says, oh, I'm sorry, Carl H. Carl H. says, white daddy is cutting the benefits, so you will see more and more of these thoughts going the IG model route. What do you, what do you think about that, Sean? I think some of them will be going the IG model route, and that's another way they bait guys because, again, that modeling is part of how they attract men because again, men are visual creatures. And another YouTuber, Ringo TV Raw, he talked about this too. He talked about these Instagram models out here and how they pull guys in because they know that there's a lot of simps out there. And what these simps will do is these guys will give donations to these women via PayPal or Patreon so they can get picture sets or they can have live streams with these women. And this is a way they will make, they have been trying to make money. And I've seen a campaign to try to fight this where guys have been saying that they want these women to release their tax information or they've been reporting them to the IRS. But this is another trick that they're gonna use because a lot of these women wanna get the attention of these unsuspecting men. And this is how they get money out of these guys. Yeah, I, I, uh, a little while back, we talked about the thought audit and um, it, it really took on a life of its own. And um, I was wondering if you, you had heard about it and what your thoughts were about it. 
No, well, that's that's something that should have happened, I believe, because a lot of these women have been taking advantage of people for years. Again, ah. it's something I talked about in my book, Stop Simping in the Workplace, how these women have more than one source of income. Usually, on average, most of these women have three sources of income minimum. They get the paycheck they get from their jobs. They get child support if they have kids, or they get alimony from an ex-husband, or they're getting money from their parents, or they're getting money from a series of simps, or a series of gifts from various different men. So these women are making income, but oftentimes that income is completely unreported because these they're in the form of gifts. So that income actually is taxable according to the law, but most times it goes by because in our gynocentric society, most people give women passes and they give her passes just because she's female. Well, all right, let me let me let me try to play uh, devil's advocate here. So <clears throat> all right, so what's the harm if a guy or or you know three or four guys, let's say, give this woman, you know, one guy gives her a hundred bucks, another guy gives her I don't know, Tiffany bracelet on I'm just making up stuff on top of my head. Another guy gives her a pair of shoes, another guy gives her a trip to Disney World. What What's the harm in that? Well, the whole thing is that these women have all this money, but yet they continue to cry poverty. I mean, these women have three and four sources of income, yet they're sitting there talking to big daddy government and talking to different men and saying, and always crying about how poor they are, when in most cases, these women make more money than most men on average when you compile all three sources of income and then what's sad about it is in spite of having all three sources of income many of these women are still living in poverty hmm. uh yeah that's 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 a good that's a good response um wow that, that's and, and you know what's interesting when these broads get older because i talked about this on the podcast too is that many of them end up being dead broke and you know they're in real bad shape matter of fact i did i, I covered one black lady who you know went to went to harvard went to uh, you know john hopkins school and national study all this sort of stuff and um she ended up you know dead broke on wel on welfare <clears throat> in her early 60s so yeah I, I you make a really good point there with regard to these um uh, I ain't going to use the other term. These young ladies uh, having these sources of income, uh, de facto or otherwise, and then they wind up in their later years, you know, destitute. Um, I'll see you. Yeah. yeah. Real quick, I just wanted to just, you know, a shout out to you and, the, you know, and to the, um, you know, um, the uh, platform of the Black Avenger. You know, I wanted to give, him the shout out, you know what I'm saying, for, you know, a stepping forward and, you know what I'm saying, coming through and making a, you know what I'm saying, a media platform for us black brothers, you know, so I wanted to give y'all credit for, you know, but to give you shout out for that and to give him the shout out for that. Um, and then, you know, I mean, another thing too about, you know, these black women in the workforce, yeah, you know, it is true that, you know, a lot of times that they do, you know, try to, con they try to control the narrative. So we have to be careful about, you know, them trying to control the narrative. I know you had uh, Amiri Brown, you know, the greater, you know, um, a liberator, you know, his radio show, you know, yeah. on your platform. And um, I was watching one stream of him on the Nyla Says show. And, um, you know, I mean, Cynthia G was really, you know, saying, going in on him. I mean, she was saying he was yelling too loud. You know, she was saying that he was, um, uh, you know, being too aggressive, basically, on the stream, you know. And um, it just, you know, another example of how they try to emasculate the black male, um, even, you know, uh, you know, across all media platforms you know um so we have to you know what I'm saying realize that and you know what I'm saying also just take strength and just be a man you know what I'm saying that's my thing just be a man you know what I'm saying and be strong 
and just be who you, you know what I'm saying? Be who you want to be, you know what I'm saying? And like you say, if they got a problem with it, there's the door. There's the door right there. Uh, Sean, your, your response. Well, I didn't really hear. I was, I was thinking about something else. I'm sorry. What do you say again? Yeah, I was just saying, like, if black women have a problem with you saying that, you know, you're masculine and, you know, or you're saying what you want, you know, there's the door. That's you know, the right response, I would say, because as a man, you have to have standards. And if this woman does not want to meet your standards, then just show her the door. I mean, there are four women for every one man. So you don't have to settle for someone who does not want to meet your standards or wants to um, submit to your authority. So you just can just let her go and go on her way. I mean, it's better for you in the long run. Right. Uh, what, what do you make of these this new crop of uh, YouTubers, let's, let's get into some, some specifics. Uh, DDS mentioned Cynthia G. What are, what are your thoughts of Cynthia G, uh, Sean? Well, I never watched a Cynthia G video, but from what I've heard from guys like Kid Organic and David Carroll, is that she's disingenuous. I mean, she's talking about when you, again, when you take a critical look at her actions, they contradict her words. I mean, that's why they call her synthetic G because she's got this weave on and she's pro black. And then she's out here with white guys. So everything that she's saying is one thing, but her actions speak louder than her words. Okay. What about the uh, Irene Yvette? What do you make of her? I haven't watched any of her videos either, but as it relates to many of these um, so-called black females, again, I just see them as washed up black women who are now desperate to try to get the attention of black men because they know that in over the last 10 years on YouTube, the gender wars, the swirling, they now are getting older and now they're starting to see that their prospects for getting relationships with black men are starting to dwindle. And now they wanna to try to change things again because this is how the washed up black woman operates. When it comes down to these washed up black females, again, they are like female chameleons. They'll change up their appearance, they'll change up their gimmick, and they'll change up their narrative. And that's what that's what they do to get the attention of men. But those men who know better, they're not letting them get away with this. And that's what David Carroll was doing. He wasn't letting them get away with that trick. And that's why there a lot of them are upset now. Um, speaking of, uh, hold on, let me get back in front of the mic. Speaking in front of, uh, uh, speaking of, rather, um, the YouTube gender wars. Uh, what is your thoughts of where things are right now and what the uh, what the future holds? Uh, the next year, the next two years, the next five years. What what do you think things are headed to go? Are likely to headed to go next in this so called black YouTube gender war? Well, I think the war is really changing because we have MGTOW now, and MGTOW has really changed the whole game for the relations between men and women, because now as men go their own way, we're starting to see again, a lot of these women starting to realize that they are, don't have the power like they used to, in spite of all the false flagging campaigns and all the attacks on black men, because I was recently attacked by a feminist when I did a whole video um, talking about that incident in McDonald's. I had a woman talking about, oh, how women wanted to get concealed carry. And then when I made the video talking about submission. I had another one of these feminists come after me. But as I presented stronger arguments, there was no way for them to even fight, to even kind of rebut me. And then also you have these females, they realize that they're losing because as MGTOW has become a, gone from a small group to a national thing, as I believe in an even an international thing, after the conviction of Bill Cosby and then the Me Too movement going after Brett Kavanaugh, we've now seen men like in like on the Bloomberg report uh, on Wall Street walking away from women and that's why we're seeing all these women now trying to call themselves being friends to men because now they know they've alienated men so I'm looking at the gender war and I look at the females and they look they know that they're losing because they see a lot of these men now going their own way a lot of men walking away from women walk avoiding women and that's what that's got a lot of them scared so i'm looking at the war and the men are starting to win but what they have to do is keep the pressure up if they hope to achieve the victory 
I'm saying, you know, uh, yeah, go ahead. Quick, you know, saying, a, you know, a very fast uh, point that I wanted to make too is that, you know, now that, you know, brothers are stepping off from black women, you know, I think it's time that we kind of like, you know what I'm saying, started to look toward further, you know what I'm saying, you know, toward the future, you know, and not just, you know, dwell on this negativity of the black woman, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, because all they bring is negativity and, you know, they're negative, you know what I'm saying, I mean, all they bring is just, you know, their problems, their debt, you know what I'm saying, all of their issues, and it's just time that we kind of like, you know, step forward and think about, you know, the future, you know what I'm saying, for black men, you know, you know, it's time for us to just, you know, move forward. I definitely agree with that because what men have to, black men have to do is now start focus on building. And the thing is that you are now building for yourself. And part of that building now is starting with putting yourself first, focusing on the goals you want to accomplish and the things you want to achieve. And that's what guys need to start focusing on right now. And this is one of the most positive things about MGTOW is that, like I wrote in my book, The Man Crisis, it's helping men redefine their masculinity and find out what type of man they want to be. And that's a very good thing because now men can start focusing on building themselves, focusing on what they want to accomplish in life and not having their world revolve around women and pleasing women. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Well, <clears throat> you, uh, you have a lot of things on your plate. And I don't want to hold you up. You, you, you have any uh, parting uh, thoughts that you may have uh, before we wrap this up? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Um. When it comes down to these washed up black women, what I want a lot of the brothers to understand is that there are a lot of these are gimmicks that these women use to get your attention, and because they know you are a visual creature, they want to get your attention, and they want to use that 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 visual image of the boho chick or the born again Christian, or that image of the back to Africa to draw you in. Then they wanna play on your emotions to take advantage of you. And then after they take advantage the edge of you and get you into their trap, then you wind up caught up with this woman emotionally. And this is something you need to look out for. And that's why I wrote the blog because I wanted guys to know what, they, what to look out for. And when I heard David Carroll make the classic video, last week about these women. That's what made me think back to my blog. And that's why I made that other video this week talking about washed up black women now praise black men because I wanted them to understand what the type of tactics these women use. Now I'm having some uh, technical difficulty here. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up everything right here. At this point, Sean, I want to thank you so much tonight. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And uh, thank you. Uh, and Sean, I'm really proud of you, man, for uh, really uh, making some huge strides. I'm, it was a pleasure for me to step in and do what I could to assist. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Keep keeping on. The, we're going to stay in touch because we got some other things we're going to get into 2019. All right. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you so much. And I want to thank everybody else out there for tuning in tonight. This has been uh, part two of the de facto doubleheader here, TGIF edition show here. And uh, what we're going to do is I think I'm going to take the weekend off and just relax. And... Um, I want to thank everybody for taking the time out. I really appreciate it. And uh, God willing, in the creek don't rise. We'll be back on Monday. What's that? Uh, the 14th? Yeah, January 14th. We'll be back on the air at that time. Until then, people All right. are gone. All right. Thank you for having me.